When you say defund the police, we're looking at building community. We're looking at a divestment from law and order to an investment in protection and thriving communities. We can plan to build the resources and the infrastructure necessary that reduces the reliance on law enforcement. Alternatives to incarceration, assertive treatment mental health facilities, education, investing in our schools, divesting from armed officers in the most minority community schools, and actually investment in social worker and counselors in activities that children were involved in. talk about the rate of Black bodies being incarcerated. We're 12% of the population, but 40% of the incarcerated population. And when you look at the charges of people being incarcerated for drug trafficking, nonviolent offenses, why is incarceration the default and not the alternative? We have to have alternatives to incarceration that we do not throw away humans we actually look at the value and actually look at everyone as having an opportunity to be great. We should be investing in what was the root cause of the arrest? Was it substance abuse? Was it a mental health issue? Is this person a chronic homeless person that has no resources that defaults sometime to committing a crime simply because it's cold outside tonight and they need a place to go? We don't investigate down into what is the core issue that's leading to the arrest. We have to invest in some of those. Does everyone who's arrested actually have to be prosecuted? When you look at the trajectory of what I call the criminal justice pipeline, you're arrested by police, overcharged. I could simply be selling drugs and they simply put the word aggravated on it, just made it actually a violent charge. I get to the jail, I'm actually arraigned in court, and I'm given a bail I can't afford. So now I'm criminalized because I'm poor and I can't afford to get out. Even doing a pre-sentence investigation, implicit bias can play into that, right? So a white guy and a black guy could have the same charge. And actually, because the judge feels the white guy is more invested in his community, he's a high school graduate, he does this, he gets probation. The black guy dropped out of high school, had to go to work. Nobody actually interviewed him to understand the trauma and different things that may have been going on. You're doing five years in prison. Now I get to prison. I get another assessment to determine what are my risks based on my reintegration back into the community. Well, First Step Act said only people who have access to those good time programs are people who are low risk. So there again, a policy that was taunted as the most national aggressive criminal justice created a loophole for African-Americans and Latinas who actually score high risk simply based on how our communities are policed, how our schools are policed. Those are the interactions that fall on your risk assessment tool. Now we're back in the community. People with criminal backgrounds struggle with getting shelter. In some states, depending on your charge, you don't have access to food stamps. You may have clothing if there's a shelter somewhere. If you can't even get the basic human needs, how do you expect for me to even have the opportunity to launch? things we have to stop thinking is that it's always based on programs because even when people invest in programs they still tell the programs who should have access and how they should have access so this is investment in people so when you talk about public health crisis mobilization intensive mobile treatment housing stable housing safe affordable housing no longer gentrifying our communities to move black people out but gentrifying the communities that black people can be a part of those communities this is not about a political game. This is not about philanthropy. This is about our lives. There are people's lives on the line and those people have to lead the change in their community and in their life. I think black people should be leading the table. We no longer want to just be invited to your table. We want to run the table to change, drastically change our lives 
and it's not gonna look like anything you've already read because it hasn't been written. That's why we're still here.